welcome back to Meet the Candidates. Your host today is Sharima Bauer, and my guest today is the City Council President, Mr. Kerry Nelson, City Councilman for the Third Ward of Flint. Thank you so much today for being with us, Mr. Nelson. Thank you for having me. It's a great privilege and honor. Oh, it's an honor to have you here. And so, would you like to tell us a little bit about how long you have been a resident of Flint? I've been a resident of Flint over uh, 51 year plus years. So I've been here uh, all of my life. I went to Parkland and then went to Whittier and graduated from Northern. And so I've been here at Flintstone all of my life. Absolutely, absolutely. And what is it that you do now, sir? What is your present occupation? I am presently retired from um, Citizen Bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, some say it's a part-time position, but this is a full-time position being a city council person. Well imagined, especially as president. Yes. I can well imagine. Why is it that you want to want run again? Well, this is something I have a passion for is people. You know, all my life when growing up uh, elderly, uh, I hung around the elderly people. Uh, I enjoyed helping them and being assistance to them in any kind of way. And so anything that I can do for the community, such as the elderly or the young, I'm there. I, I've been there for this community. I love working for the community. I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. I like listening and I like also making things happen to bring that resolution to that person. So I, I, I enjoy, you know, and there's many people from different walks of life that I listen to and I try at the end of the day to make sure what they ask me to do is fulfilled. So I enjoy what I do. Excellent. And you've been on the city council a combined total of seven years. That's correct. And here in the third ward. Yes. And what are the issues that you feel the third ward faces the most? Well, certainly we know that the water issue is a main concern for our whole city. But there is other areas in the third ward, such as uh, the blight. And um, that is a great concern for not only me, but for part of the most of the city. Because if we look at what the master plan says, it would take about $64 million to rid of all of the blight. So we're working every day, I am, trying to make um, pathways and avenues um, for the third ward to, to get rid of the blight. It is a big concern, uh, abandoned homes, tall grass, and we have to deal with the land bank on those issues. But we try to work in partnership uh, to make the third ward wood a livable, a comfortable, and a safe environment. So that's my task every day. I, I know what it will take to get rid of all of it. Do we have $64 million? No. But we can do some things every day uh, to get rid of some of the blight. And we're working at it. We're chipping away at the block every day. What are some of those ways that you're working at getting rid of the blight? Well, we, we look at uh, our abandoned homes. Uh, since I've been in office, we've already torn down some 450 homes. This year alone is scheduling 424 homes to come down this year. So we're working uh, at that in partnership with the land bank, mm -hmm. constantly with the city and what we can do for tall grass, dumping. Dumping is an issue in certain areas. So we ask those if you see dumping, uh, see if you can get the license plate number. Call me. Don't, you don't have to call the police. Call me. Let me do that. That's why I'm here, to serve. So we're trying every day to chip away, as I say, of this blight in the third ward. And that's an issue. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to let anybody fool you. That's an issue. But I'm faithfully working every day trying to get rid of blight. If you have that one thing in the seven years that you've served on the city council that you, you felt was a huge accomplishment, something that you felt was a, was a great thing that you were able to do and bring about? Well, you know, I, I can say it was several things, okay. but mm -hmm. when you see those who are less fortunate, uh, that don't have, that needs assistance and whether it be food or help paying for their consumers or rent, when you can sit down with those who are able to take care of that need and make those dots connect, that's a good feeling that someone won't be put out of their home, a consumer bill will be paid, the children will be fed. 
when you involved in making things like that happen, that's a great accomplishment. And I, 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 every day, I look for what I can do to help somebody. Every day, there's a different challenge. And I'm trying every day to make sure that I'm a light in, on somebody's dark path. That's excellent. I'd like to kind of switch just a little bit and go just slightly in a different direction and talk about the Regional Transition Advisory Board, RTAB. The famous RTAB. Famous. And as a city council president, what are, what are your opinions on that? How have you, again, as president, managed to work with them or not? Well, I have, um, I don't agree with the RTAB. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel that um, when I fought to get the council's power back, and we return to home rule, then I don't need someone to stand over me to make sure I'm doing what I was elected to do. I'm going to do that. For the last two years, we have presented a balanced budget. We have helped people come back to the city that were at one time leaving. Some people are moving back in. The art tab, and let me give you an example, we fought for a moratorium on liens on home to prevent liens to being on homes. I took charge of that. I, I, and I'm still going to fight to change the ordinance. But the RTAB, after the council said, we all agree, and I think it was eight to one vote, the RTAB came and said, no, it will cost the city too much money. And so they had the authority to knock it down. I think it's time for the RTAB to pack their bags and go home. I, 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 I have no use for them now. I never did. But as council president, I attended over 90% of the meetings. So I'm there, and I pleaded the case for this city where what we need, what, we, what the people that elected us is saying, we have to listen to them. The RTAB doesn't. We do. And again, as city council president, what are some of your goals now for concerning the water crisis? Well, I definitely want to make sure that when it comes down to the third ward, that we have safe, clean water and affordable water. Now, it's no secret we have a deal on the table for 30 years. Most of the people that I've talked to in the third ward who've called me, the black clubs I attended, they don't want that because that's just like you sitting down at the bank doing a mortgage and they tell you to sign on the dotted line. You don't read anything that's involved in the contract. You don't know the rate. You don't know what you're going to pay. Just sign because this is the right thing for you to do. That does not go with me. It doesn't flow with me. I don't buy that because any time I think about it, putting on my banker's hat, I'd rather have a fixed rate where I know what I'm going to pay every month than a flexible rate that I don't know what I'm going to pay. Exactly. So instead of the Great Lakes Water Authority, what do you think would be a good option? You know, for so many years we have worked on the KWA. We were going to get water from Port Huron, build that pipeline. We have a facility here in Flint. All we need is the right people to run that facility. Why can't we treat our own water? Why can't Flint have its own? So many times we find ourselves depending on other sources or other people. We have educated, qualified people here in Flint that can do the job. And most of the time that I hear people say, Carrie, what are they going to do with that plant? Or do they plan to scrap it? And that's the truth. That's what they plan to do if we take the 30-year deal with Gleela. It's gone. So if we do that, Flint will never be able to treat its own water again. And so that's something we need to look at. Yes. That's another piece of the puzzle. That's right. And there are talks about this, yes? Yes. Right it's talks about it, and people are concerned about it. People are weighing in on it and saying, what sense? Who will it profit? I've asked the question, when will it bring, if this is such a great deal, what kind of relief will it bring to the citizens of Flint? What kind of water relief to reduce their rate? And no one yet has, can tell me 
what kind of savings it would be for the citizens of this city. Right. And so, you know all of the challenges that are here. Yes. And they are large and they are numerous. They are. Why run again? Because that's just it. It's too many that's large and numerous, mm -hmm. and I'm willing to take the fight. I'm not tired. No one can bully me. No one can make threats. I'm going to do what's best for the people of this city and certainly in the third ward. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to be on the right path. I'm going to do the right thing, not for Kerry, but for the people that elected me. And even for those who didn't, they still live in the third ward. And I still represent them. And I'm going to be fair and straight down the line with them. Good. And what are some of the, you've been here so long, what are some of your favorite things about Flint? Listen, we are a community, a family, a neighborhood. When I grew up, that the neighbors looked out for one another. If I was go across the street when I was growing up, my neighbor had the right to say, uh-uh, you go back before I tell your mom or daddy, or had permission to hit me and then tell mom and daddy. But we looked out for one another. If you needed a cup of sugar, if you needed some flour, if you needed a little help in any way, your neighbors were one big family. Everybody looked out for one another in this community. We were, General Motors was here. Everybody worked. Everybody tried to make sure that everybody had a piece of the pie. We didn't, it wasn't all just for us, just for the Nelson family. It was for every family. If we could help you, we did. That's the way we were brought up. That's what I still see. Some people want to paint a different picture, but that's not it. We're here to make this community safe, clean, and livable again. That's excellent. Well, and that is a lovely segue here to our end, where if you would look into this camera, Mr. Nelson, mm -hmm. and tell the city, the third ward residents, why you are the best candidate for them. Because I've been here all my life. I'm dedicated, I'm trustworthy, I believe in you. I believe what the third ward can be and it's going to be with hard work, with dedication and cooperation. I sit at City Hall late at night to return phone calls, to answer emails. I tried to answer every call that came my way. Now some say they called me, they didn't get me. I want you to know you can find me. You can call me at 810-610-3888. I'm there for you. I'm on the job. I burn the midnight oil. I want to see this community, especially the third ward, blossom and grow and come together as one family as it used to be. And we're on our way there. Don't let nobody fool you. You have somebody who believes in the third ward, believes in you, and I'm that person. Carrie Nelson, I need your vote. I need your support. As you've done in days past and gone, I need you to step up to the plate, and I need you. You need me, I need you. And we will be right back after this. Mm -hmm.